Have you ever stood beside a wide, winding river and wondered, how did this water carve out such massive valleys? Or seen a map of a river splitting into smaller streams near the sea, and thought, why does it look like a tree with so many branches? Welcome to Magfar Online, where we turn curiosity into clarity. In today's adventure, we are following the mighty journey of a river as it flows through its middle and lower courses, where the real shaping of the land begins. From meanders and oxbow lakes to floodplains, levees, and deltas, we're uncovering how rivers carve, curve, deposit, and transform entire landscapes. By the end of this video, you'll know why rivers start to bend and twist in the middle course, how they build new land in the lower course. And what incredible landforms, like oxbow lakes and deltas, tell us about the power of moving water. Before we dive in, here's a splashy question for you. Why do rivers curve instead of flowing straight to the sea? Drop your best guess in the comments, we'll shout out the top answers in the next episode. And don't miss the quiz at the end to test how much you've mastered. So hit like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell, so you never miss our weekly drops. Magfar Online, where learning never stops. Let's set sail on a river's journey, and discover how water sculpts the world beneath our feet. Let's dive in. Previously, we saw that in the upper course of a river, the main type of erosion is vertical erosion where the river cuts downwards into the landscape, forming steep, narrow valleys. In the middle course of a river, the landscape changes significantly as the river flows from steep highlands into areas of gentler slopes. At this stage, the river gains more water from its tributaries, becoming wider and deeper, but it also begins to slow down. The flow is usually smoother, and water moves with less turbulence compared to the upper course. The gradient, or steepness, of the land is much gentler, and this change affects how the river erodes its surroundings. Instead of cutting deeply into the ground through vertical erosion, the river now performs more lateral erosion meaning it wears away the sides of its banks. Sideways erosion and sideways movement of rivers is noticeable in the middle and lower courses. River valleys are wider there. There is more deposition of the river's load. As a result, the river begins to widen its valley, creating broader U-shaped valleys that are less steep and more open than those found in the upper course. One of the most noticeable features in the middle course is the formation of meanders. These are large bends or curves in the river that develop as the water erodes the outer banks, where the current is fastest, and deposits material on the inner banks where the flow is slower. Over time, these meanders become more exaggerated as the river continues to erode sideways. The middle course may also include river cliffs on the outside of bends and slip-off slopes where sediment is deposited on the inside. On the outer bend, the current is fastest and has the most energy. This fast-moving water erodes the bank through hydraulic action and abrasion, carving a steep, often vertical face called a river cliff. By contrast, on the inner bend, the current is slower and loses energy, so it drops the sand and gravel it was carrying. These layers of deposited sediment build up a gentle, beach-like ramp known as a slip-off slope, or point bar. Together, river cliffs and slip-off slopes show how erosion and deposition work side by side. The outer bend is worn away while the inner bend is built up, causing the meander to gradually migrate sideways across the valley floor. In summary, the middle course of a river is where it begins to shape the landscape sideways, creating wider valleys and meanders through lateral erosion. The river loses some of its earlier speed and energy, but it continues to play an important role in sculpting the land as it moves closer to its final destination. In the lower course, the river is nearing its mouth, where it will eventually empty into a sea, lake, or ocean. 
By this point, the river has collected a large volume of water and flows across very flat or gently sloping land. The valley shape is broad and flat, often forming extensive floodplains, wide, flat areas that may flood during heavy rains. Because the gradient is very gentle, the river has low energy, and its speed is much slower than in the upper or middle courses. In this stage, the river performs less erosion and instead focuses on deposition. As the river slows down, it drops the sediments it has carried from upstream. These materials that include sand, silt, and clay gradually build up and create new landforms. Some of the major landforms in the lower course include floodplains, meanders, oxbow lakes, levees and deltas. A floodplain is the flat, wide area of land found on either side of a river. It forms when the river overflows its banks repeatedly during periods of heavy rain or flooding. A river often covers its floodplain when it overflows its banks during floods. As the water spreads out over the land, it slows down and deposits layers of fertile sediment or alluvium. When the floodwaters recede, this sediment remains behind, enriching the soil. Because of this, floodplains are often very good for farming due to their rich, nutrient-filled soil. A meander is a winding curve or bend in a river, formed through both erosion and deposition. As the river flows around a bend, the water moves faster on the outer bank, causing erosion. At the same time, the water flows more slowly on the inner bank, leading to deposition of sediment. Over time, this process makes the bends in the river more pronounced. In the middle course, meanders begin to develop, but they become larger and more exaggerated in the lower course due to the river's increased volume and sediment load. The continuous erosion of the outer bank and deposition on the inner bank cause the meanders to shift and change shape over time. An oxbow lake is a crescent-shaped or U-shaped lake that forms when a meander in a river is cut off from the main channel. This process begins when the river flows in large bends, known as meanders, which are common in the middle and lower courses of a river. On the outer bank of a meander, the water flows faster and causes erosion, while on the inner bank, the water moves more slowly, resulting in the deposition of sediment. Over time, this causes the bend to become more curved. As erosion continues, the narrow piece of land between the two closest parts of the meander, called the meander neck, becomes thinner and thinner. Eventually, during a flood or period of high rainfall, the river may have enough energy to break through this narrow neck, creating a new, straighter route for the water to flow. The old meander loop is then cut off from the main river when sediment is deposited at both ends, blocking it off. This forms a separate, curved body of water called an oxbow lake. Because it is no longer connected to the river, the oxbow lake may slowly dry up over time, especially if it doesn't receive regular inflow. When this happens, it leaves behind a curved, low-lying area on the landscape called a meander scar, marking the path the river once took. Levees are natural ridges or embankments found along the sides of a river channel, usually made up of sand or gravel. They form during flooding, when the river overflows its banks and spreads out across the floodplain. As the water slows down, it drops the heavier materials, like sand and gravel, closest to the river bank, while finer particles like silt are carried farther away. Over time, repeated floods deposit more material along the banks, gradually building up raised levees. These natural levees can help contain future floods by acting as barriers. The more often a river floods, the higher and more pronounced these levees become. Deltas are flat, often triangular landforms found at the mouth of a river, where it flows into a still body of water like a sea or lake. As the river reaches this point, it loses energy and drops the remainder of its sediment load, made up of fine silt, sand, and clay. This process of deposition gradually builds up new land. Sometimes, the river's main channel becomes blocked by sediment, 
forcing it to split into multiple smaller channels called distributaries. These help spread the sediment even further, creating the fan-shaped pattern typical of deltas. The exact shape of a delta is influenced by factors such as wave strength, tidal activity, and how much sediment the river carries. Famous examples include the Nile Delta in Egypt, the Mississippi Delta in the USA, and the Niger Delta in West Africa. However, South Africa has no major deltas because its strong ocean waves and currents carry sediment away before it can settle. Deltas are incredibly fertile, making them ideal for agriculture, and they often become densely populated due to access to water and rich soils. In short, the lower course of a river is where it slows down and deposits material, creating important landforms like floodplains, levees, and deltas that support farming and human settlement. We've just uncovered how rivers shape the land, twisting through valleys, carving out cliffs, and building up fertile floodplains and deltas. Now it's your turn to test your knowledge. Pause the video, answer the questions coming up, and then check your answers on screen. Lock in what you've learnt, Magfar style. But don't go anywhere just yet. Next up on Magfar Online. The sea, nature's most relentless sculptor. Ever wondered how a single wave can smash cliffs, build beaches, or carve mysterious caves into solid rock? Join us as we dive into the power of wave action and explore jaw-dropping landforms like cliffs, arches, stacks, bays, beaches, and more. We'll reveal how the ocean sculpts coastlines, one crash, one swirl, one grain at a time. What's stronger, river erosion or wave erosion? Comment below and let the debate begin. So smash that like, subscribe, and ring the bell, so you're first in line for our next mind-blowing lesson. Magfar Online, where learning never stops. Stay curious, stay sharp, and catch you on the coast in our next video.